in the back end of crucial compliance uh, player protection, we have that data. The data is only as good as where it's hosted, which is normally with the operator. So there is a risk that at some stage that data will get corrupted. And so then we look at the blockchain um, and or if we put the data onto the blockchain, then we create an irrefutable log of all that data. It's time stamped, it's correct. And at any time you can check that against the system to make sure that the system has integrity. Hey everybody, welcome to Hashing It Out. I am your host, Becky Legiro, and today I'm here with Paul Foster of Crucial Compliance. Paul, you've been doing, making the rounds lately at all the gambling conferences talking about Crucial Compliance. Today we are at Betting on Sports Europe with Chelsea Stadium in the back, so special location for us today. Thank you so much for being here. No problem, Al. Thank you very much for having me. Love it, love it, love it. So today we're going to talk about how blockchain technology can be used to supercharge the ways that we are dealing with compliance in the gambling industry space today. And Paul comes from the compliance world. And so I wanted you first of all to describe what Crucial Compliance is doing to help operators, especially those who are multi-jurisdictional, multilingual, multi-everything, and helping them keep compliance uh, in the jurisdictions that they are based in. Great, no, thank you very much. So at Crucial Compliance, we've built a system called Crucial Player Protection, which actually is a behavioral monitoring system, um, which looks after the whole player experience uh, from the moment you sign up through to the time you're playing. And we monitor your behavior, and whenever you change your behavior, then we know about it and we can then interact with the player. So it reaches many different levels from responsible gaming to safer gaming into affordability um, and really makes a difference to those players because it's automated. So you get a nudge in the right direction and it's all about keeping the player in the fun zone and not in the danger zone. The fun zone, not the danger zone. Love it. Excellent. And I know that you have partnered with Enchain. You are working with their Kenze platform, uh, which is built on the BSD blockchain. But first of all, I wanted to know how you actually even heard about this opportunity, how you met the guys from Enchain. Give us that, that bit of a backstory there. Yeah, so I haven't been in the industry for several years, and so has Nick. Um, it was just, a, we were actually talking about something completely different. Yeah. Um, and, and we were just chatting away. Um, and Nikhil and I suddenly realized that this was a great opportunity. Um, and then when I told him about the platform we built mm -hmm. and about how it was key to storing all the data, but the problem we had was data integrity, all of a sudden he just went, hold it. I think, I think we've got the, uh, the answer here. And so we started looking at whether uh, the end chain was the answer. And thankfully with the Kenzai platform, we found something that was really, really positive. So we thought, let's explore the opportunity. I love that. And you mentioned, I think, pain points here. So I wanted to provide to our audience here some perspective on what the pain points are really when it comes to specifically, let's say, responsible gambling to the operators that you deal with? Yes, yeah, so the key pain points are actually identifying that they're a problem gambler. Mm -hmm. And when you do, it's then what do you do with that player? So how do you change them from being a potential at harm into being in the safe zone again? Mm -hmm. So that's a really painful process to get right because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So um, the key to that is behavioral monitoring. So when we monitor somebody's behavior against their own behavior and they start to change, we can push them in the right direction. And when you then work with the operators, the biggest problem they've got then is how do they interact? What do they say? When do they say it? How do they push the player back into the good zone? So um, with Crucial Player Protection, we were able to actually build it automated into there so that it does the message and it does the interaction, it pushes the players. So at that stage, we've got a great system and it's logging everything that takes place with that player and creating an audit trail. I love it. And so what role does the blockchain technology play in this whole process? So one of the issues we've got in the industry is data integrity. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of merger and activity uh, going on. So companies are always merging, they change platforms, they change their data uh, providers. So as a result, the data is often corrupted. And when you come into a regulatory area, that data must always be absolutely perfect. Um, and whilst in the back end of crucial compliance uh, player protection, we have that data, the data is only as good as where it's hosted, which is normally with the operator. So there is a risk that at some stage that data will get corrupted. And so then we look at the blockchain. Um, and or if we put the data onto the blockchain, then we create an irrefutable log of all that data. It's time stamped. It's correct. And at any time, you can check that against the system to make sure that the system has integrity. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I know something that catches people's attention is when we talk about avoiding fines, <laughs> yes. these huge fines. Can you just give us an example of a situation that has occurred 
uh, where an operator has been fined for something that they, they didn't even do anything wrong, but they just didn't have the right data to back it up. Yeah, so a few years ago, I was working with, at an operator and um, we had a situation with an anti-money laundering case whereby all of the evidence was pointing to the fact that the person had done something wrong. Um, we did a full investigation. We followed our process and uh, policies. It was all good. What then happened was the person had stolen money, which was not our fault. Um, they then went to the Gambling Commission. The Gambling Commission did an investigation into us. And unfortunately, we could not prove that we had done the right thing. And it ended up with a £4.8 million pound fine for not having the correct data. Yeah, see, we don't want this. <laughs> Use blockchain, it won't happen. <laughs> and, uh, and Paul, I realize that the crucial compliance doesn't actually need to be regulated or get a license, but you deal with gambling companies that need licenses all over the place. When you're speaking with regulators, I know you're based in JIB, so you probably have a good relationship with the regulator there. Yeah. What are their thoughts when you talk about plugging into a blockchain solution? Does that word scare them? Are they okay with it? Are they happy with it? What, what are you getting from that? It typically depends who I'm talking to and how, how educated they are. Because as you know, you talk about blockchain, the first thing everybody thinks about is crypto. Yeah. So it's an education thing for them to say, look, we're not using the coin side of it, we're using the data side of it. Mm -hmm. And because the data is a distributed ledger, what you in reality have is timestamp data. When we explain that to them, they go, okay, but how will that help us? And when we then start talking about the Kenzai platform, we talk about access to the data. Mm -hmm. um, then all of a sudden they get very excited and go, so in reality, we could independently verify that data that you've got in your system. Um, and we go, yes, that's the whole idea yes. of it. So they get quite excited there. Love it. We want the regulators excited. That's great. <laughs> Not the other way around. Very cool. Um, and, and obviously you're quite forward thinking because you're already using blockchain tech right now, which is which is super cool. And I was just wondering why you think it's taking a while for the gambling industry to really latch on, maybe that sounds negative, or, or get, get involved with the blockchain tech there is because it really can do so much for our industry, but why is it, why is it taking such a long time? I think the key element was accessibility. Mm. So when you want to start using the data, it was just too expensive. Mm. Um, so all the cases where we wanted to use it meant we would be storing quite a lot of data mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, and so the cost was prohibitive. Um, when you then also talk about it, most people obviously thought of payment solutions mm -hmm. um, and everybody get confused and then you have risk officers who say, oh, we're not touching crypto. So um, you, you do have to break down some barriers, even in a, a an innovative industry like the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point you make about the cost because some of the blockchains out there, they have really high transaction fees. Yeah, again, yeah. so BSV of course does not. <laughs> and so it makes it really affordable, in fact, cheaper than, than storing the data in the more traditional system. Yeah, cheaper than AWS server. I love that, awesome, <laughs> brilliant. Paul, this is so great that you are involved in this space because you get it. And I really do hope that seeing Paul here talking about how wonderful it is to use blockchain tech will inspire some other companies in our space to get involved and get educated. And um, thank you. I hope you have a great time at this event and at all the events that you're visiting and keep thank it up. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. And thank you guys so much for watching. This is Becky Legiro for CoinGeek.com.